Welcome to the Veteran Show. I'm one of the hoax. I'm Levi Miller. And I'm Tom Lugan uh, out of Troy, Illinois. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody this week to the show. Uh, we got a we got a guest, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, who's also a Converse Scout like I am. His name is Harold Mason. Uh, you just Harold uh, is one of those that did serve in the Cold War. But instead of like Lee and Levi, where we spent our time up in the Korean DMZ, Harold has got to spend quite a bit of time up in the East German border, up in Fulda Gap. Uh, one of the most, uh, many people don't realize, us in the military did, one of the most notorious places of uh, being overrun if we ever gone to war with Russia. But uh, uh, Harold will discuss and tell you what it's like, because they're... They didn't have to run combat patrols like we did, but they still had to run patrols right. and work the borders. So, but Harold, uh, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you. Uh, thank you, Thomas and Levi. Um, uh, hello, everybody. My name is Harold Mason, and I am out of Chicago, Illinois, and I serve the United States Army on uh, active duty from 1986 to 1990. Uh, what years were you in Germany, Harold, with the 11th, 11th ACR? Uh, I was in the 11th ACR from 11 uh, March 86 uh, to March uh, 1988. Okay, so you spent two years there. And, uh, That's give us, just to, do me a favor in general, you know, just give an insight what it was like to uh, serve up there in Fulda Gap. You know, because you live there. Not that, uh, not only did you all have to patrol the, the border, but you all live right close to it. I mean, and, uh, you know, so my time in Germany was a couple of reforged or so. You know, go to the graphing beer and live at the beer tents, what we did. But uh, and, and, and Harold, is that is that an 18-month month tour? I know when I was in service, Germany was an 18-month tour. Uh, is, is, it, is it the same or it's, it's longer now? Okay, uh, that's what I, I thought. When I got there in 86, I saw the tail end of the 18 month guys, uh, PCSA, which means they rotated back to the United States, leaving. But when I was there, a standard tour was two years. Oh, okay. That makes right. sense. sponsored or for the listeners you know who don't know what that means you know if they brought their family they had to stay even like three years didn't they or were they two years also Yeah, 13 months. At one point. And so, uh, but it was a one-year non-command sponsored tour, you know, and uh, so, uh, of course, you know, as we all know, the Korea, you know, is a little more different, you know, uh, in its uh, in duty, at the, or was at the time. It's changed now. Uh, trust me, it's changed. But, uh, but uh, yeah, did you enjoy Germany? Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, I'm just looking to say that, right. It's really that good. Okay. You know? And, um, yeah, it was, uh, it, it was a lot of fun for a, uh, for a young single man uh, during that time. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it wasn't HDR uh, in the cab world. Levi might not just notice as well as you and I. The later 11th ACR, how do you want to say, is one of the most standout regiments you'll find. You know, for this, for the, uh, well, for the 20th century at least. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot, it's one of the, it's one of the standout regiments. I don't know what other words to use for it. You might have something better, Mace. But, uh, I just know, uh, you know, everybody knows who the 11th ACR was, no matter where they served, and no matter if they served in Korea or not. And part of it's because, after they pulled out of Vietnam, and uh, actually it was 14th ACR there before 11th was. And uh, when Vietnam, when 11th, I forget the exact date, but when 11th ACR came out of, uh, left Vietnam, they redesignated 14th ACR to, uh, back in the early 70s to 11th ACR. And so, you know, of course you had 2nd ACR south, y'all, but... You know, I think part of that notoriety comes, too, for 11th ACR is sitting in one of the most dangerous places of the world. Uh, you know, a lot of American people don't realize how dangerous full the gap was back then. The, you know, the danger that could happen. You know, uh, we always, you know, like me and Levi, we always joked at Korea, you know, you we had the one area north of what we call Freedom Bridge, and uh, if you were north of there, across the Imjin River, uh, God, sorry, you aren't going to make it back across. Correctly, <laughs> but, that's, that's true. You won't make it back. So we were just a speed but, bump. Uh, the horde we would have seen over there had been a whole lot smaller than the, the you know, the horde you would have seen coming through full of gas. Correct me if I'm wrong, Harold. <laughs> Come on, Thomas. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, I was just thinking uh, last night, uh, the, uh, you guys that were stationed on the DMC, you, you faced uh, an immediate uh, day-to-day danger because of the combat patrols uh, that you ran and the uh, combat patrols that your adversaries, the uh, North Koreans ran. Whereas uh, we in the Fulda Gap, uh, our danger was more of one of uh, potential. Uh, yes, we did run patrols. They weren't combat patrols. They were observational patrols. They were reconnaissance patrols. And, uh, yes, we did carry live arms on these patrols. And, yes, we did have an armed reaction uh, force at our uh, border camp that was uh, waiting to back up those patrols if uh, anything uh, bad happened, let's just say. Okay. Enforcement, I see that now. Yeah. Hey, you said you said well, well, Doug was a mix, but you said it for the last few weeks. Yeah, so that's right. Barrel up on you. Yeah. But uh, but they, you know, I, I, and that's 
But, you know, talking about that, Harold, I think that's the big part. People don't realize the sacrifices on either side that were made. And that's one thing. I'm not trying to promote Bob's book, but what Bob is trying and Bob Kern is trying to do is tell the story. And let people know, we just didn't sit on our, you know, especially in Europe, you didn't just sit on your thumbs and twiddle your, you know, twiddle them. You know, we had missions to do, and you guys did too over in Germany. You had missions, you had a full. Okay. And um, for those who are not familiar, the Warsaw Pact was uh, the Soviet Union and Union's answer to uh, NATO, uh, which was uh, the Soviet Union and all of their Eastern Bloc allies on the other side of the Iron Curtain. Uh, those allies being uh, East Germany, Poland, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Czechoslovakia, and uh, Hungary. So. Right. Them days was rough. I, I, I remember that, Harold. You know, you you sitting out, you sitting out there, and and you know if something go down, you won't make it back. Well, and I don't think, you know, while uh, again, you know, you take the happy Americans back here in the states, you know, and, and that's what's so different about our country. Uh, you know, a good part of our forces have always been deployed overseas. You know, because we are pretty much the world policemen. You know, or uh, I don't know if policeman's even the right word to say. But we, you know, the, we, we're the defense of the world. We, and it takes us to be in all of these hot spots, you know, the, try to bring, I guess you could say, peace to the world. You know, not all of us always agree to what goes on, but, you know, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, uh, but I, you know, I don't, you know, and that's what I want you to bring out because I don't think people realize how, you know, what was the spectacular. Were you in constant firefights with these Germans? No, you weren't. But shit, excuse me, stuff did happen. You know, issues happened. Uh, I remember over the years, you know, years back when we were younger, uh, and once I hear about a chopper uh, getting shot down over there, or getting shot at from both sides, I believe. You know, and... Uh, so, you know, incidents like that, even, and I'm talking Germany, not Korea, you know, uh, yeah. incidents happen. Um, and uh, it's, yeah. it's just, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, 
So, and uh, I've always iterated that, you know, even more than Korea, that the guys that served in the border in Europe back during the Cold War they never got the recognition they should have. That's my opinion. And that's my opinion also, too, because anytime you're facing a Russian, you know, that could be pretty rough. Okay. So, um, Reagan is the president who, uh, rightfully so, is credited with basically winning the Cold War. You know, but I, I like to remind people, Reagan didn't win the Cold War with, uh, w- w- with words and policies. You know, uh, yes, he was, uh, he was very hard on the, uh,
Right. <laughs> Uh, a friend of mine, in fact, he's from the Joliet area, uh, 
which uh, I, you both I probably heard me. I know uh, Levi for sure heard me mention his name. And uh, but he, uh, Bill was uh, with Twenty Fourth and Korea in fifty five, fifty six, or fifty six, fifty seven. And Twenty uh, Fourth left in fifty eight. And I was talking Bill Howler, uh, you know, retired major league umpire. Oh yeah. Famously, you no, know, from nineteen eighty with his bot with uh, 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 I just went brain dead, but what's him call for the Baltimore Orioles? So wild out there, and uh, 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 but Bill, you know, uh, he was over there, and we talked about, but he was there, you know, right after the Korean War. But he was one of the few people I know that's been with the twenty fourth on the DMZ, you know. So, uh, but yeah, that was something I read about not too long ago. How they served in both, and it's the only division that done that. Uh, so, uh, like first Cav. I don't think First Cavs ever deployed to Germany, did they, except for Reforger? I don't think they had a forward brigade. In. What's that? Oh, no, I'm just saying, uh, as far as I'm just Reforger. And, yeah, uh, see, uh, First Cavs been in and out of Korea. In fact, they did a rotation. Uh, of course, now, second, second ID over there, uh, it's the command there. But they only have a maneuver brigade. All their maneuver brigades are at Fort Lewis now. And I, I try to understand what the Army does sometimes, as we all know, is uh, impossible to understand. But they're all at uh, three of the, uh, maneuver, the three maneuver brigades are at uh, Fort Lewis now under the command of 7th ID, but yet they're 2 ID. So don't ask me, but uh, what was, I found kind of funny because I saw posts that... Uh, because I keep up a quarter cab out of Fort Riley, first ID. Well, uh, first ID for the first time in ever has got units in Korea. And first ID used to have a forward brigade in Germany for a long time. But uh, I know it's my old Rick. Yeah, because uh, in fact, the uh, 86 and Marine Forge, there's a certain Senegal, uh, we had a squadron reunion. That was the first time in a long time we've had the whole squadron together. At the, that time, it was Charlie Troop. And uh, actually, we switched colors with I was Alpha Troop, we switched. And it's because we were going through reorganization of Fort Riley. And, uh, but, uh, but yeah, they had the Ford First, uh, their third brigade of the first. And, uh, so, but, uh, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to understand or intriguing or figure out, you know, you get designations like with Korea. Well, people go, well, this camp or this. Well, it changes this time. I said, I, I, I kind of become a historian myself on Korea in general, especially the second ID and the DMZ and even some of the seven. I said, I, I spent a total of 13 years there, so I'm familiar. I was there seeing a lot of the changes. What's funnier is people all start arguing. It's like, buddy, I was there. I was involved with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why you argue me? <laughs> you weren't there. <laughs> yeah, they'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, now the patrols, did you guys, back to patrols, I'm interested in patrols, naturally. When you guys ran patrols, did you have to do day and night, or? Eric? Yeah, um, I believe, and it's been a long time, but I'm pretty sure we did do uh, patrols during the day and night when uh, we did the foot patrols on the border. Yeah. Uh, well, you guys, now you guys had guard towers to babysit too, didn't you? Just like the DMZ. Yeah, um, yeah, um, we had, uh, on the, um, on the East German border. The, the way we did it is we had border camps. Okay. Um, each, um, each squadron had a border camp that they were responsible for, and they were rotating camp troops, cavalry troops, through these border camps, and we were usually at the border camp. A usual border camp rotation was two weeks. Sometimes it would be longer depending on the needs of the unit. Um, wow, I didn't see I, that. This I didn't really know or understand in the past. I'm sorry. It, I like no. This is neat. This is information. I. That's why I wanted you on here. You, you, you're doing a good job explaining what even Levi and I don't know. Right. I'm, I'm le- sorry. Go ahead. Wow. I'm learning a lot. So, um, I was a first squadron. Our um, border camp was called OP Alpha. OP Alpha stands for Observation Point Alpha. Um, <clears throat> there were also, we had other border camps in the, in the regiment. We had OP India, uh, OP Romeo, uh, OP Oscar, and OP Tennessee. I believe those were all the border camps in the regiment. I can only speak on OP Alpha 
corner. And um, I remember one time uh, I was in a tower and uh, there was a high D flying a border trace on the uh, on the East German side. Now, um, is everyone still there? Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah. What was it? I'm not sure. No, I got nervous. <laughs> Ever went into combat, that the Soviets would definitely 
Oh yeah, that's party time. Okay. <laughs> That's true. You, you want to outdo, you, you want to outdo everybody else. You don't even realize you're doing it when you're doing it. You know, but you, you, you want to be good at your job. And one of the reasons you want to be good at your job is because you know that the situation that you're in is so real and life and death. The better you are at your job, hopefully, the better chance you have surviving actual combat. So that's well, that, 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 that you survive. Hey, you just, you just, watch your phone, Mace. He just kind of, I don't know if uh, he moved it or something. Oh, no, 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 he didn't move it. We, we charging it up right quick. Okay, so we got it back in place now. Okay? Yes. All right. Can you hear good now, yeah, Thomas? I, 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 I can hear him. Okay. There he goes. Yeah, I can hear him. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, you know, talk alerts are here. Uh, Korea, that was quite common too, and you just got to point the repetition so you knew what to do because you're just so repetitive. And uh, sometimes, like, okay, another alert, you know, you get new guys in, they'd be panicked because you just look, I don't look over, just, just follow along, you'll figure out what we're doing. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the border camps, I, I've heard of that, but I didn't realize that's how it exactly work. Each troop. Each troop in the squadron had their own border camp then. Well, each, each squadron had its own border camp. And then or a squadron, I'm sorry. Camp. Yeah. Right. So, and, no. uh, see, I didn't know that. I, I mean, I knew they were in their own, you know, uh, whatever, you know, uh, sectors. What's the term, but sectors, and they had their own regular, uh, we call camps, so, you know, I know the different names happened over there. You know, like the, the name of the, because in Germany, uh, you didn't call them camps over there, the regular camps where your permanent barracks were. You guys called them, and they, it varied in name, like uh, I just went brain dead. Like you had to call them real concerned. <laughs> yeah, concerned. K A S K A S E R N. Uh, concerned, which I believe is the German word for barracks. Because uh, where I was stationed at, uh, in Boulder was Downs Barracks. And uh, some will call it, or, or Dallas Concern. So that, that's, yeah. that's what we call them there. And they were basically just many army bases. Uh, you, you know, army bases in the United States are huge. They're like cities. Oh, yeah. Um, and in Germany, they're more like towns or villages. You know, they're, they're most Yeah. Small. But they have all the same okay. things, you know, motor, motor pool, PX, you know, towns, all of that. But see, that was like uh, Korea, you know, we just called them, they were outright camps. No matter, and, you know, of course, then you got the Air Force a little different. But in the Army, we call them camps, period. And, uh, you know, uh, except when you got in the DMZ, but like you, we had the various OP guard, uh, guard posts. But uh, what had happened to DMZ, uh, just to give you knowledge, when a year rotated up, there you had... One nine infantry was always stationed north of Freedom Bridge. They were permanently there. Right. And but the rest of the units, we would rotate up there ninety days at a time to pull missions, whether it's guard uh, at the various guard posts, the OPs, uh, uh, patrols. I mean, up in the DMZ, you actually had six to eight patrols constantly running. You know, day patrols and night ambush. You know, uh, so uh, but. Uh, but yeah, now let me ask you this: I, you know, like in the DMZ in our sectors, the engineers, those poor guys, they're the ones that had to clean up and uh, maintain the minefields, let alone the bunkers and the towers and that. And I know Korea, the minefields uh, along the DMZ are horrid. I can tell you that from experience. They're just all over. Korea's always been one of the most heavily mined areas in the world. And uh, but I know mines were used in Germany, but. Uh, now, in your case, along the border, what was it like? Just a double fence, was it? One on the west German side, one on the east German side with minefields in between? Something like uh, that? Kind of, but not quite. Okay, <clears throat> when you got to the actual border, and the OP Alpha Outlook camp actually sat all the way up to the actual border. Uh, when you yeah. got to the actual border, you had these poles, and the poles were uh, probably about four or five feet high. And they were called barber poles, and the reason they were called barber poles is because they were painted red and white, just like the pole you see in front of a barber shop. 
you're kidding. Okay. No, I'm not kidding. That was on barber poles. All right. Uh, Yeah, that's right. Egypt, which is a whole other story. So, uh, I, I'm in Egypt, and uh, 
training. And uh, our, uh, our uh, platoon leader, our lieutenant, told us that the, uh, the wall had come down and the uh, borders had opened up for Germany. And uh, basically, he was like, it gets over. And uh, I didn't believe him. I said, there's no way. You know, I was just there. That, 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 that you know, that, that I, I don't see that happening, you know. But it did, you know. And uh, it, it was a weird feeling because, honestly, um, I think to a man, everybody that was stationed there, um, we figured the only way that that border was going to open up was uh, through some type of uh, hostile act, you know, war. Yeah, yeah. We, we never hey, figured we... that you could sign with him yeah, on that, you know. Right. Hey, Alan, I, I decided to, I, I, I know we're pushing time. Yeah. And I think I told you before, it's amazing how an hour goes quick here. Uh, I'm going to cut you off a little bit. One of the things uh, uh, i like you to talk about real quick is what Bright Star was. Yeah. Uh, I never, I, you know, again, that's one of those exercises. I never even knew about it until you mentioned one day, and I'm like, what the heck is that? I never heard of it, you know, a few years ago. You posted something on Bright Star on Facebook, and I'm like, what is that? Yeah, so that's and, and, what happens. Well, I'm, I'm all concluded in Korea at the time, but uh, if you don't mind, uh, for the last few minutes, if you could give us a little detail, what uh, about Bright Star? What went on there? If you don't mind, because you, I, I thought you deployed from Germany, but you actually deployed from uh, 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 Fort Stewart for that. Okay, Bright Star. That's correct. Right. Uh, Bright Star. Remember how I mentioned the rapid deployment force? Right. And, yeah. Uh, one of those things uh, that, that was uh, one of our deployments um, everybody's heard of Reforger and that the uh, uh, Re- Reforger stands for Return of Forces to Germany and um, that's when the uh, mostly the heavy mechanized armor units in the U.S. Uh, deployed to Germany on um, almost a yearly basis maybe every other year to uh, show that we could show up there uh, to defend Western Europe well Bright Star was kind of the same thing for the Right, right. 
what army are you in? <laughs> right. Well, well, hey guys, we about to run out. Well, we 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 are a little over now. And, uh, yeah. And how I enjoyed it because I really learned something. Because you know, all I did my tour, you know, in Korea, of Monday Nam, and I was back home. But you really taught me something today. Well, and that's part of the reason. Uh, I wanted Harold on because, I, you know, he's, like I said, uh, Levi is very fluent, and he has been very fluent, a fluent talker. Yeah, Harold so sounded like, like, heard... sound like a captain, yes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, too, uh, thank you for having on. And we can always get you back on sometime down the road, too. Uh, I mean, there's always more we can talk about. And uh, I, I thank you for the spill of bright, sir. I wish we had more time, but... Uh, like I said, the hour goes quick, and uh, I, I truly, uh, you know, uh, appreciate and having you on the show, Harold. And thank you. And and Harold, I got your number. I I will be calling you. <laughs> oh, it's a bit of trouble now, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk about this stuff till I'm blue in the face. Hey, hey, you know, I love it because I don't get a chance to talk to no one. You know, I met Thomas on Facebook, and that been that been great for me. Because, like I said, uh, we started. We were talking baseball, not military. Then. Right. <laughs> because the civilians don't. They don't understand. That's the only time I get a chance to talk military. Yeah. And I love but, it. Uh, well, we yeah, I gotta agree. We gotta wrap it up. I gotta okay. get going here. You okay. Shut off yet? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna get ready to close the program. You know, I, okay. I, I'd like to thank everyone for listening to the Veteran Hour, and we had. We have a prestige uh, soldier here, Harold Mason. He, he was one of them cow, you know, for all those grunts here. So next time we'll have some reinforcement for Thomas and Harold. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and Harold, you like to say anything before you leave? You like to get a shout out to someone? <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every moment of talking about it. Uh, like I said, I can I can talk about this uh, my experience uh, forever. Right. And, um, and uh, thanks for having me, Levi and Thomas. This this was great. Well, I really you, enjoyed it. You know, anytime you want to come back on, get in touch with Thomas, and we'll roll. Oh yeah, well, I'll get him back on, Levi. Don't worry. Okay, okay. I'm gonna be a nag. All right. All right, well, 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 Thomas, I'm going to close it out, Thomas. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, the show will come on, uh, the show will come on on Tuesday. Yep, at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, and the rest of y'all know your times from there. Right, there you go. All right, well, we we go we to call it a night, and uh, I thank everyone for listening in, and we'll be looking forward for you coming on uh, next week. All right, good day. Good afternoon. All right, you got, we're done? Yeah, we...